Faye Compton and Mary Wimbush in a play for radio by Philip Levine. The Companion. Miss Danby! Miss Danby! Oh, where's my stick? Coming! Where have you been? Outside, Mrs. Harcourt. Emptying the bin. It's a glorious afternoon. Didn't you hear me call? I walked down the garden. It's simply lovely. Mass of colour. Are you sure you wouldn't like to get up? The fresh air would do you the world of good. Would it now? But if you're such an authority on my welfare, Miss Danby, where are my capsules? Your... My vitamin capsules. <laughs> oh, come along, woman. You've been here nearly a month. You're familiar with the routine by now, surely. I'll get them, Mrs. Harcourt. Here you are. No water? Oh, uh, sorry. Is your memory going, Miss Danby? I don't think... I pride myself that in spite of my age and infirmity, I'm in full possession of my faculties. Here. My mind is extremely alert, wouldn't you say? Oh, remarkably so. Are you being facetious? Oh, no. No, I promise you. I hope not, Miss Danby. I never tolerate rudeness of any sort. Certainly not from a paid companion. You're extremely fortunate, you know. Jobs aren't easy to find at your age, are they? What were you doing before you came to me? In some office, weren't you? Hmm. A clerk. The firm switched to computers and Pity I... Pity you never married, Miss Danby. Oh, well, there was of a... Of course, young... to marry. To marry well, one needs background and... and looks. Have I shown you those photographs of me as a girl? Yes, you have. I was inundated with proposals, but I chose wisely. Harcourt left me well provided for. You're very fortunate, Mrs. Harcourt. I might agree if I wasn't plagued with this rheumatism. Oh, if, if only you'd get out a little more... Dr. Palmer said... Talk sense, woman. How can I get out when I'm confined to my bed? Where's Tabitha? Oh, on the landing. Ah, oh. oh, oh, my little pet. Come on, up here. There's a good girl. Well, clear away the lunch tray, Miss Danby. It's cluttering my table. Certainly. What have you done? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't realise it was so near the edge. You must have moved it. Oh, my fault, is it really? Well, well what's broken? A cup and a plate. My best service, too. Well, I said I'm sorry. Oh, that is a great help. Miss Danby, do you think you're quite up to this job? I try my best. If this is an example... Oh, but Mrs. Harcourt, it really wasn't. Oh, my don't mind. go on. Pass me the telephone. Oh. Now, what's the number? Ah, yes. Well, what are you waiting for? Run along. Oh, very well, I'm going. Hello? Times newspaper? Put me through to advertisements, would you? Yes? Mrs. Harcourt, there's a Mrs. Price to see you. Oh, don't just stand there. Show her up, Miss Danby. Would you come up, Mrs. Price? Thank you. Uh, this way. Thank you. Mrs. Price? Yes. That'll be all, Miss Danby. Oh, very well. This side, Mrs. Price. And draw up a chair. Thank you. Now, Oh, I... what a beautiful cat. It is a Persian, isn't it? She is, indeed. You've never seen such a coat. <laughs> yes, it's, it is rather splendid. And now, oh, shall I, I straighten your pillows before I sit down? You don't look too comfortable. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Oh, and uh, perhaps I should close one of those shutters. Direct sunlight can cause eye strain. Mm, that's very thoughtful of you. Yes, well, I'm sure you've enough to contend with without unnecessary irritations. Mm. Do sit down, Mrs. Price. Mm -hmm. Now, I, uh, I have your letter somewhere. Now, ah, ah, here we are. Yes, most impressive. And your references. One might imagine you've written them yourself. <laughs> Hardly. This Mrs. Ryder, was she your last employer? No, her sister. My former employer died suddenly. Heart attack. How distressing. Yes. She was bedridden too. 
How long were you with her? In nearly five years. And before that? I was married. My husband passed away and there were debts. I fully understand. Left high and dry without a penny. Uh, no qualifications and it isn't easy for a woman of my age. I'm sure not. I've seen so many. Though I must say you're not somewhat different from the usual run of applicants. Your clothes are extremely tasteful. Expensive, too, by the look of them. Oh, you surprise me. I make most of them myself. And you're well-groomed. Hands are nicely kept. I like that. Some of them will turn up well. I mean, you've, you've seen Miss Danby. Mm. She seems a nice woman. But useless. Utterly useless. Going a bit senile, if you ask me. Can't remember the simplest instruction. Oh, dear. Well, I suppose it happens to most of us. Sooner or later? Not at all. Not if one keeps the mind active. If one has a companion with, well, with a reasonable level of intelligence. I mean, that that woman can't even play whist. Well, that is a disadvantage, I agree. Oh, you play, do you? Yes. And bridge and canasta? Yes. Oh, excellent. And you cook, of course. Oh, nothing fancy, but I'm sure you'll have no complaints. No. Let's discuss terms, shall we? I pay £15 a month and all found. Oh, that's somewhat less than I have been receiving. Oh, yes. is it? As my previous salary was 20 I believe it's the usual rate. Oh, I don't think I could run to that. On the other hand, you'll be very comfortable here. And you are getting on. Let's face it, there are fewer and fewer people these days who can afford companions. It might be months before you find another post. Yes, that's true. Then what do you say? All right. I'll accept. That's splendid. I'm sure we should get on well together. Now, I'd like you to be here by midday tomorrow. Can you manage that? Fine. Look forward to seeing you then. Oh, you might ask Miss Danby to come up on your way out. Certainly. You to lead, Mrs. Price. Now, what have you got? A pair of kings. Aces! I'm afraid I've beaten you again. Yes, you have, haven't well, you? I feel quite stimulated. Such a change from those dreary afternoons with Miss Danby. That reminds me. Where'd she go? Oh, I neither know or care. Hardly been gone a week and I feel like a new woman. You're so understanding, Mrs. Price, and so very attentive. Well, that's what I'm paid for, isn't it? After all, you've given me a home. You can't imagine what it's like to be without roots. Oh, but I had a very trying life. Lived at Barnes at one time, when Harcourt was alive. Gorgeous house, but the servant problem made things impossible. So we came here. Harcourt was in the city, you know. Oh, yes. Stockbroker, such a dreary occupation. You have no children? No, I'm more or less on my own. Something wrong, Mrs. Price? No. I thought you looked a little pale, that's all. Oh, really? Where's my mirror? Oh, here. Thank you. Yes, I think you're right. Perhaps you call Dr. Palmer. Oh, certainly. His number's on the pad downstairs. See if you can look in this evening. In the meantime, I would rest. Would you like to read? Yes. Pass me my book. Which one? The novel, Chance Meeting. Oh, I think you've finished that. Oh, have I? Well, you asked me to put it back on the shelf. Well, it's here if you want it. Is the bookmark still in it? No. Then I must have finished it. There's your bookmark. In this paperback, the Agatha Christie. Oh? You are halfway through it. So I am. Oh, look, I, I, I don't think I'll read after all. I'll have a sleep. Oh, I shouldn't worry. We all forget things. Don't you forget to call Dr. Palmer. No, no, I won't. I'll telephone and ask him to call this evening. <laughs> Mrs. Harcourt? <laughs> Mrs. Harcourt? <clears throat> oh, yeah, I... Come along now. Sit up. Oh. Here, now let me help you. Oh. Uh, that's it. Oh. Uh, now, what would you like for lunch? Lunch? That's not the time, surely. Yes, almost one. Good heavens. Must have dropped off again. Not all nice sleep in the mornings. I'll grill you some haddock with milk pudding to follow. Oh, that'd be nice. Right. This is Price. Yes? Wasn't Dr. Palmer calling in again? Dr. Palmer? 
Before lunch, you said, didn't you? Yes, I, I remember you saying... He's been. Been? And, and why didn't you wake me? You know I particularly wanted to see him. You did see him? Not today. He came at 10.30, just as I brought your coffee up. I brought him a cup. Oh, coffee cups are still there, look. Now, surely you remember him calling. If you, if you want me to be honest, no, I don't. And if this is some kind of a joke... Dr. I... Palmer called here at 10.30. He left you a prescription. What is it for, the prescription? It's some pills, I think. What sort of pills? Let's see. Oh, what writing. Uh, La Gactyl, it looks like to me. It's some sort of tranquilizer, I believe. Tranquilizer? Yes, it's used in the treatment of... Of what? Oh, nerves and that sort of thing. It's... It's my mind, isn't it? Oh, of course Mrs. not. Mrs. Price, I am not a child. Please answer me truthfully. There is something wrong, isn't there? Uh, an occasional lapse of memory, but that's not unusual at your age. I shouldn't worry. It certainly doesn't warrant a trained nurse. A trained nurse? Oh, now that wasn't my suggestion. Dr. Palmer's, was it? Well, of course, I wouldn't hear of it. I mean, we get on extremely well, don't we? Indeed we do. And I'd simply hate the thought of you being in the hands of a private nurse. It'd be like, like being shut away in one of those... Oh, I agree. I... I couldn't bear well, that's it. That's exactly what I told him, and he said if I could manage, fine. I see no reason why I shouldn't. Thank you, Mrs. Price. Why are you smiling? <laughs> I was just amused at the way we address each other, Mrs. Harcourt and Mrs. Price. I, I do have another name, you know. Mrs. Price sounds as though I were some paid servant, and you don't look on me in that way, do you? No. No, no of course not. I... We're... We're companions. Well, then, aren't you curious to know what it is? Mm? My other name? Yes. Tell me. It's Janet. Janet. I see. And yours? Your name? Mabel. Mabel. So may I call you that from now on? Please do, Miss Price. Janet. Janet. Yes. Yes, of course. Well, now I'd better go and collect that prescription. Don't be too long, will you? I hate to be in the house. Alone? Oh. Oh. Tavern. I must have dropped off again. Where's... Where's Mrs. Price? Oh, Janet. She's back by now, surely. It's only a few minutes to the chemist. Someone there. She's back. Janet? Janet? Is that you? Janet? Are you there? There's someone there. I, I'm sure of it. Soon see. My. Where are my sticks? Ooh. Oh. Out of the way, Tabitha. Janet! Mabel? What? On earth? Oh, why? Why didn't you answer me? Pretty obvious, I've just come in. But I heard you. Now, will you come along back into bed or you'll catch your death? I tell you. Now, come I along. I heard Let someone me help on you. the landing. Come along. Oh. In you get. Oh. Oh. There we are. Well, it certainly wasn't me. You heard me come in. I've been to collect your prescription. Here. It was you. It must have been. Why are you lying to me? If you think that, then there's nothing more to be said. Perhaps Dr. Palmer was right after all. You should be in more capable hands. I'm sorry, Mabel. No, wait. No, Mabel, the more I think of it. We wouldn't go. You couldn't. But a nurse would be so much better. I don't want a nurse. <laughs> well, I don't know what to say. I, I shan't forget you, Janet, I swear. I have no one else. It'll be yours, Janet. 
the house, my shares, everything, I promise you. That isn't necessary. I'll call my solicitor this afternoon. I would rather you didn't. No, I insist. An act of good faith, you might say. Hand me the phone. He can bring a clerk, and we can draw up a new will in a matter of minutes. Well, of course, if you really want to. I'm sorry if supper's a little late, but I thought I'd better wait till your solicitor left. I told you it wouldn't take long. Well, I hope they didn't excite you. Dr. Palmer felt you should have left it for a day or so. How did he know? Oh, I mentioned it when he dropped in before tea. Well, what's wrong? Nothing. But you're trembling. What is it? I... I don't remember Dr. Palmer calling today. When did you say it was? Before tea? Well, now, don't you worry about it. <laughs> but before I become forgetful, I must... Close and lock these shutters. The shutters? Why? Well, Dr. Palmer thought your eyes seemed a little strained, so he suggested I close them for a day or so. Oh, really, Janet? Well, only if you want to disobey him. No, no. Close them if he says so. This fish tastes a little odd. Does it? Well, let me see. It smells all right. No, you're not going to leave it? No, no. It, it, it's probably just me. Well, I'll be downstairs. I have a few things to do. Uh, call me if you need me. Yes, Janet. Now, now, Tabitha. What do you want? Some fish, eh? Well, you're welcome to it. Go on, then. Quickly. Mabel, that looks tidier, doesn't it? Mm. Uh, can't we open the shutters? Now, Mabel, please. It's for your own good. Of course, if you're going to be difficult... Oh, all right, leave them. Where's Tabitha? Well, I thought she was up here. No. No, I haven't seen her this morning. Mm -hmm. Odd. She's, she's always here when I wake up. Well, she's probably in the kitchen. Which reminds me, you hardly touched your breakfast this morning. I know. I, everything seemed to taste... Well, I... Oh, I don't know. Perhaps it's my appetite. Oh, did you mention it to Dr. Palmer? No. Well, you should have done. Now, why don't you call him, see what he has to say? Yes, I think I will. Pass me the phone. Yeah. Now, his number is... Oh. Well, there's no dialing tone. Isn't there? No. The receiver isn't off downstairs. No, I'm sure it isn't. Oh, the... Must be out of order. Could you find a box and call the engineer? There's one near the church, a few minutes from here. Oh, yes, of course. And and when you get back, see if you can find Tabitha. <coughs> Janet! She can't have gone out. Oh, we'll soon see. Where are my sticks? They're not here. They've gone. Janet! Janet! Now, what's the matter? My sticks, they've gone. Oh, didn't I mention it? Well, Dr. Palmer rang while I was getting supper. He thought you wouldn't leave your bed. But I can manage... Whether you can or not, he's the doctor. And... I, I assure you I'm quite capable. Are you? Then why are you confined to bed? Look, I want my sticks, you hear me? Fetch them. Very well, if you insist. But you realise this makes my position impossible. Oh, all right, leave them. It's just that I feel so helpless. As one gets on, that's inevitable, isn't it? But there are people far worse off than you, Mabel. At least you've a home. No financial problems. Oh, that reminds me. There are some bills to pay the butcher and the dairy. Do you pay by cheque? Yes. Pass me my bag. Yeah. Where are the bills? Oh, downstairs. Don't worry. Just sign your name. I'll fill in the amounts later. <laughs> really, Janet, you, you, you don't expect me to sign a blank cheque. Why not? I imagined you and I were companions, that you were someone I'd trust implicitly and whose trust I could expect in return. I see I've been mistaken. Where are you going? To pack. Pack? But you're not leaving? How can I possibly stay on now? If it's a paid servant you want, then I can soon arrange for that nurse. Now, if you'll excuse me, I... No, Janet, please come back. Here, look. 
I'm beside them. Fill in whatever amount you'd like. There. Are you happier now? Go on, take the checks. Oh, I hope you can meet them. Of course I can. There's enough to cover those bills. Well, there's more than enough in those accounts, I promise you. Though I don't seem to have had my statement this month, usually here by now. Oh, they occasionally get behind. I expect it'll arrive in a day or so. Oh, it's, it's stifling in here. I can't bear those shutters closed. I'll talk to Palmer. I wish he'd called. I'll... I'll ring him. Yes. I'll ring him. If I can reach the phone. Ah! Oh. Now, let's see. His number's... There's no tone. But it must be working. Janet said, yes, she, she said, Palmer rang up. But how could he, if it's still out of order? She lied to me. She must have done. She's been lying to me all along. There's nothing wrong with me. My mind isn't going, I'm perfectly sane. She did it deliberately. Why? The will. Those checks. Oh, God! She's trying to... Yes. That fish. Tabitha. I must get help. If I can get downstairs to the front door, I... Oh. <clears throat> you, you can walk. You, you know you can. Now, now come along. It's not very far. That's it. Nearly there. It's locked. She's locked the door. Open this door. Do you hear me, Janet? Open this door. Janet! Come along, Mabel. Wake up. Mm. Your tea, your early morning tea. Keep away. Keep away from me. I'll leave it here. I don't want it. I shan't drink it. You lied to me last night. Palmer never rang up. You've been lying to me all along. I know what you're trying to do. Do you? Yes. You forced me to alter my will. I forced you? But I'll change it. I'll call the police. How? You've no phone, no sticks. The shutters are locked and bolted. You could scream your head off and no one would hear you. Horrifying, isn't it? Oh. Is that all I have to do now is to lock that door and go off for a few days? No, no, you wouldn't. <laughs> I must say I've been sorely tempted. You're a garrulous old woman without a thought for anyone, but fortunately I don't need you or your money. <sighs> I've enjoyed this little charade, but I really can't leave Kate on her own for much longer. Kate? My companion. Oh, you're not acquainted, but God knows she's suffered enough at the hands of people like you. That familiar advert appearing every three or four weeks, that's what brought me here. Every time I saw it, I couldn't help wondering. I shall prosecute you. That's what I shall do. I shall... On what grounds? Oh, I'll admit Dr. Palmer only called once. I collected the prescription from his surgery. But you said... I'm afraid our conversations are merely hearsay, not evidence. This is my solicitor. He... But you called him. I didn't. And as for your checks, I've paid the bills just as I said. You tried to poison me. All I did was to omit the seasoning. Then where is Tabitha? She's right here. Oh. I put her in the garden and she's never been happier. No, Mabel, I don't think you'd have much of a case. So very clever, aren't you? But I caught you out. And well, I hoped you would. The phone was off the hook downstairs, and I deliberately made the mistake about Palmer. That was the purpose of the exercise. So what have you proved? That you can frighten a helpless old woman? Ah, you're not that helpless, Mabel. But you are vulnerable. There may come a time when you will need someone. Just think about that when you employ your next companion. Uh, that reminds me. And what about you? You might have given me a heart attack. Oh, your heart's fine. I checked with Palmer. There's nothing wrong with you that a spot of exercise wouldn't cure. Well, perhaps I did go a little far, but in the long run, you may thank me. Thank you? Mm. For what? Oh, well, I think you'll agree you're the perfect victim, Mabel. 
Perhaps I've saved you from being murdered. Hello, the Times? Oh, give me advertisements, please. Mary Wimbush played the companion in that play by Philip Levine. Mrs. Harcourt was played by Faye Compton, and the production was by Keith Williams. <laughs>